Hello everyone there out in internet land. It's Tuesday, so you know what that means. TV Tuesday. Yes, Spirekins podcast where we talk about all things television. Well, not really. We talk about the newest and greatest shows out there. I'm your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, and what's up? Hey, it's Greta. Yes, we're back for another fun-filled episode of this wonderful podcast, actually the 17th episode. And you can listen to any of our earlier episodes at www.spirekin.com. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and various other social media sites. Just type in S-P-I-R-A-K-N, and I guarantee you'll find us one way or another. So I hope you've been doing good this last week, because there's actually been a lot of stuff which has come out this week. Is it really 17 episodes already? 17 episodes. Oh, 17 weeks of this already. O-M-G. Crazy, right? Yes. But yes, yeah, so that's how we've been rolling. We've been doing pretty good with this. And things have been a little crazy with all the nonsense, because now officially it is the third quarter of the year. It is now officially fall. Well, not really. Fall officially starts September 21st, but we're going to say fall started already, because the fall season and things are coming out now. Like pumpkin spice. Lies. That doesn't come out ever. But uh, you have, um, there are a bunch of TV shows that have come out, like Transplant, which none of us watch because, well, reasons. Um, the new season of The Boys came out, which we're catching up on. We're going to do a full review on the superhero show because, well... Because it's superheroes. It's based on a comic book. And yes, I know you're to say, wait, but all of the first half of this series, we talked about Stargirl. Well, yeah, that's because we were getting this show up and running, and now we can find other shows to talk about. But... And frankly... That was a challenging television show. Yes, it was. And we've been checking out some of the stuff that's been out. And there have been some very interesting shows that have come out. And some which are pretty cool. Now, one that I'm excited to talk about that's coming out is... Uh, well, is well, there's a Nola Holmes coming out. Which is going to be a streamlined... Oh, with cannot episodes, wait for that. And a couple other shows. But so far, we're going to be talking about two big shows. So... Anyway, let's actually get started about it, because there were two really big things that came out this week. And first off, let's actually talk about the show, which we're going a little backwards. We're talking about the show that we missed last week. We're talking about Umbrella Academy, episode four of season two, The Majestic Twelve, directed by Tom Varika. And I gotta say, this was an episode that was one part... Filler and one part, let's get everybody together. It kind of like surprised me. I, after we were done watching it, I kind of sat there scratching my head like, huh. Now, I do love how in the opening sequence, it's kind of like James Bond-esque where there's some action and things happen. And then the opening sequence happens and then the show starts. And I really liked how they opened it up because you always get the Umbrella logo. And this episode was The Umbrellas in Blood. Yes, it was, and it actually set up the whole concept of what is going on with uh, with Lily, because we know that something is up with Lily, but we find out what's going on with, uh, sorry, Lila, and I've got to say, it was kind of a shock to find out what happened. It's also hinting at something interesting, which I may be wrong, or I may be right, but we're going to have to wait and see. You had that going on. You had the fallout of the last episode with Luther um, essentially throwing a fight he was paid to win, which is... Yeah, he, like, got the snot beat out of him. Because he was pissed off at what was going on. You have what's going on with Allison and her husband, where her husband is kind of upset that something's up with her and he doesn't know. You have Vanya, who's asking questions about what happened in the future, which... When she finds out, things are probably not going to be well. And then you have her Cl past, the world's future. Yes, and then you have Klaus, who Klaus is trying to save someone that he cares about, and it's going to go horribly wrong, or maybe not. And then five, of course, five and two, uh, and Diego trying to stop their father from causing whatever's going to happen or meeting him, and they see a familiar face at one point. So this episode did have a lot going on with it, but nothing really pushed forward. It's still the same day. Yeah, that's why I was like, it feels like a filler. Like, it feels like a lot of things have happened, yet at the same time, nothing really happened. That that's is why I was true. confused. This seems like a part one of two, almost. Like, this is the beginning of something that's going to happen. 
One thing I did like about this is that um, halfway through the episode, not spoiling much, but five questions one of the characters and mentions that his brother is an idiot. He's like, my idiot brother doesn't see it, but I see it. And then within five minutes, he runs off and his brother talks to the same person and says, what's going on? So he's not stupid. He's just trying to be more low key about it. Yeah. But I think that five knows what's going pretty much knows what's going on and then but it's it's a good episode it's not the best episode of the season but it is one which does bring up a lot going to it we'll talk more during our spoiler section after the credits as usually we do our initials but this is one which you could watch but this one not like it's enjoyable you kind of it moves it moves the story along for all of them like a teeny tiny bit this episode could have been shortened a little bit we really do have to come up with a rating system for this show. We yeah. really do. We will. Trust me. If you have any ideas of phrases we could use for the show, email us at Zan. That's X-A-N at Spark.com. But I still think it was like a good episode. It's just not much happened. That's just it. Not much happened. So let's actually get into the more interesting show. We're talking about Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country, episode four of season one, A History of Violence. Directed by Victoria Mahoney. And I gotta say, the title doesn't make sense until the end of the episode. Because it's focusing on, uh, I gotta say it, um, kind of colonial theft, enslavement, a bit of appropriation. In a way you would not expect, because it was kind of out of the left field. But the whole episode is essentially a Journey to the Center of the Earth, Indiana Jones, like episodic serial pulp adventure where Atticus, Letty, and Montrose have to go into a secret location to find a mysterious MacGuffin. And there's booby traps and adventures. Which is so up my alley. And you actually see some of the um, relationships between the characters getting better. You also see some things which you wouldn't expect in this episode. Now, also besides this, you have um, Hippolyta, the widow of... Is it Hippolyta or Hippolyta? Uh, Hippolyta, actually. Okay. Hippolyta is the correct pronunciation. But Hippolyta, um, trying to find out what happened to her deceased husband. And now things are getting more messed up. Because she knows something's missing from the story. Yep. And then, of course, we have more information on what's going on with Christina. And also something really weird going on with Letty's sister. Uh, I gotta say, this is one of the best episodes of the season. Because... Like, I don't want to, like, spoil too much. I feel like I have a lot to say after. It feels like a Indiana Jones National Treasure adventure. It's a pulp. It's a pulp adventure. And I love the fact that... Except, it's like... With real danger. Like, someone could die at any second. But that's most pulp stories, and I love that. Yeah, but Indiana Jones, you know, no one's actually going to die. You know, like, National Treasure, no no one's actually going to die. I like that Tick was when he goes down into the, in the beginning of the, 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 quote unquote, the dungeon. He's like, this is like, this is like Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's him still being a geek. And the whole beginning of the thing is like, we never get to have these kind of adventures. Mm -hmm. And he's getting into this adventure, which is good. You also have some other characters. Like, there's one random character who shows up and then he disappears. Like, what he's doing there. Eh. Adding color. No pun intended. <laughs> I hope not. Legitimately no pun intended. Yeah, and but the show is well done. I highly recommend it. I think the standout acting was between Montrose and Atticus because we see more of their relationship developing. We see uh, Montrose's relationship with his brother, how he felt about him, and also one of the cool things you see that there's more to him than just him being an alcoholic. There's more to him, and seeing that he actually loved his loves his son and his brother. Yeah, his whole family, really. Yeah, it's just it's a weird situation. There's more to him than what we know. We hope we find out more. I have more to say after the spoilers. Yes, so. I think that we're going to just end it there. If you saw these two episodes... It was a great episode. You have to watch it. Yeah. Let us know what you think about uh, History of Violence. It was a very 
I want to say it's a very gra- not groundbreaking, but it's one which has set a lot of pieces into place. For I'm curious where it's all going to go. And, well, I gotta say this one, definitely watch it now. It's probably the best episode of the season so far. Stop what you're doing. Put down your phone. Watch yeah, it. watch it. Um, so I think that's it for this episode for the non-spoiler part. So if you have not watched this episode, stop what you're doing. Watch episodes. If you have watched episodes, stay tuned for After the Music. Or if you're a wimp like me and kind of need to know if people don't, are going to no, die or no, not. No, no, don't, don't. Then listen to the spoiler. Don't listen to the spoiler section. So we're going to end it here for the non-spoiler section. Wait till After the Music to hear the spoiler parts. Anyway, I'm Zan. I'm Greta. We're Gonsville. Catch you guys next time and keep watching TV shows. Stay tuned for the spoilers. time i have a lot to say yes so so much is going on and we're gonna go in actual correct order now we're starting with lovecraft country and wow i gotta say the whole fact that this has all been christina trying to get a hold of the missing pages that uh what was it that um because she's not a son of she's not a son of adam which makes no sense, but she's she's an heir of Adam, and the whole cult of the son of Adam are looking for the missing pages so of the she's book that was start, stolen. She's got to start her own. Well, she can use spells and, and whatnot, so she's got to be like the. I have a feeling like the daughters of Eve are going to be. I don't think more powerful than the sons of Adam. But they, but there aren't the daughters of Eve. We don't know. Granted, what. I just made that up, but it was brilliant. But we don't know what is going on. We know that Titus stole some pages and they're looking for them. And the fact that it was hidden in the museum was kind of cool. And all of... Well, is it though? Because it the entrance was in the museum, but that was in the house. It was beneath the house. That was crazy because the fact is that's over 200 miles. It's Chicago to Boston. Right. That's not that far. You can't walk that distance. But they did. Yeah, it's that's some reality warping shit, which I just yeah. But say. so is a plank that you walk across that disintegrates out of nowhere while still standing up off of a um, bottomless pit cavern that you can't see. And then, of course, we have the um, pirate galleon cabin, which is hidden in a ceiling where everybody is in suspended animation, 
dead. So, and essentially, they're all underwater in the pirate's cabin. Very Pirates of the Caribbean. Very insane. And... Very cool. And then essentially you have, like, Pocahontas. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, what is her name? Uh, Yahima, who is, uh, Titus's ex-captive uh, who had a tragic story where... Who is not speaking English, yet can... Yet Atticus can understand... But she can understand him. Yeah, and it's a shame because she's the one who could read the pages, and now... But, with that, so... Montro slits her throat. Because he's legitimately trying to save the family. So he read the whole book, now he burns it. He wants, he like, he knows that this is powerful stuff. And it's interesting that out of all of it, there was like only two pages, or missing the missing pages from the whole book. It was only a few pages they were able to translate, and all of the power and um, spells that they have from it are from just a few pages. So imagine what they could do if they could translate the whole book. But they only have, like, a scroll of it, which is, like, four pages. And now the person who could translate it is dead. And the weird thing is that this person was a hermaphrodite, it seemed. So that was kind of crazy. Uh, Yahima was a man-woman. So neither a son of Adam nor a daughter of Eve. It was, But essentially, you know, the sons of Adam enslaving them. And just throughout history, it's so crazy. She wanted to be surrounded by her people, so like that that's where you saw the chiefs and everything. I thought the reanimation of her when you went to go grab the scroll was how many times has she been reanimated and died? I don't know. I will say that that is very Faustian. The whole, oh, we promise you'll be with your family, and it's they kill the family and bring them along. That's horrifying. And it is very m- morbid. And getting to that point was actually kind of cool, because we didn't expect them to go back to her elevator they showed it last episode but that was set up but you you saw when the guys broke into the house and went into that that wrong area you saw them with weird caves and things like that oh when you saw them all dead yeah at the end of the last episode but it's it seems that this episode did set up a lot with them with Montrose. And then Letty, like, when she sees the dead body and she's like, that's the missing neighbor. I'm like, well, there you go. Well, at least Letty and Atticus are now kind of on the same page. That whole, most episode was them being in each other's throats because they're, that awkwardness from last episode. Of her, well. He wants to protect her, but she thinks that she doesn't need to be protected. Well, also, having sex, like, that insanely in a bathroom is one thing, let alone it being your first time. Yeah, but it's he's trying to say I don't need to, I don't need you guys help. But they've been just in it. I mean, Montrose was held captive for what was it, two months, underground. He had to dig himself out of out of there. Letty died. Died. She straight up died, and then she was brought back to life by magic. And the thing is, I'm curious if this magic is permanent, or if there's a ticking time time bomb with it. Like, she's been reanimated, but there may be like a, oh, you're starting to die again. You have to make a deal with Christina to stay around longer. Well, the hoodoo, voodoo thing that they did with the blood on the door prevented. What's her name from being able to go into the house? That was cool. Christina. But that's because there's other magic, which is good. And it's like, she knows, because she said in the last episode, her mama tried to scam people with it, but she knew people. So she knows hoodoo. Right. A little bit, which is good. And it protected them from Christina, who Christina is... Well, it protected the house from Christina being able to enter it. And speaking of which, now that we know Christina is looking for the, uh, the Oreo, the Oriori, the, um, the solar system, mm. that said another piece because it was stolen by Hippolyta. Or Hippolyta. 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 She stole it. Well... She sees it in the it room. Became, it became... It was open to her in the room. It was in the house. And she took it from there. But it wasn't hers. It was in the house. So she But it was it. in the house. True. It was in the house. The house is theirs. It's in the family. Well, the house is... Bought and paid for. But it's not, it's not her family. It's someone else's family. It's, it's technically Letty, so she stole from Letty. But... 
That's speaking of things, which she now knows what's going on. I was actually seeing her with her daughter and finding out that she actually named the constellation, and because of, well, politics, they didn't put her name under it. That is kind of cool and kind of tragic at the same time because it's making her. Was it a comet or was it a. It was a comet. Yeah. And it's Harris Chariot, is what they called it. So that was kind of cool to see that. Now, the D plot with, um, with Letty's sister and, of course, the goon himself. Uh, this is name. Um, hold on, look at my notes. Uh, with William talking to uh, uh, Ruby and hooking up with her. Oh, yeah. It's leading up to something interesting now. Well, because the sheriff there doesn't like Christina being there. Nope. And being there unannounced. Um, because so, like most cults, there's a there's like boundaries you can't cross. So the sheriff is gonna, is an issue. So I really liked how the sheriff had people watching where she was or she was going. And then William just straight up kills them. He didn't kill him. He sent the message. He beat the poopy out of them. Yeah. And um, now, Lovecraft Country is based on a book. And someone spoiled one thing about it to me, about Ruby, which I'm thinking they're going to do. And I don't know if it's going to be a good thing or bad thing, because it's very crazy. Uh, but it makes sense in the episode. Now, I know I'm being a little bit enigma, but that's because Greta hasn't read the book and I don't want to spoil it for her. But just the phrasing that William asks her before they start having... Get it stuff, on. It's it's hinting that this is going to occur. Because this has been a little faithful, but not really to the book. Like, some of the elements are the same, some are different. I don't know where it's going to go. And I'm really excited to see what's going on and what the mystery is with Montrose. Why did he kill her? What are they going to do now that she's dead? Are they going to be able to translate the books? Do is we need he, to get the book and read it real quick? Is he going to, are they going to just give the pages to Christina and that's it? Or are they going to just stay fortified in the house behind the spell? Or if they do anything with the pages, are they going to use them? Or is the dad, Tick's dad, going to... Burn the pages. Can they be burned? I don't know. And I wonder if Ruby's going to be used to steal the pages if they if she can get through the... Uh, barrier. Because that's the thing I didn't even think of till now. So we have to wait and see. If you have any theories, let us know. Email us. Uh, Zanspirekin.com So, now that we're done with that, let's talk about Umbrella Academy. Um, finding out that Lila is the handler's adopted daughter and seeing her go through her being raised by Lila, was uh, by the handler, was crazy. It's such a cool way to open it up, but she killed her parents. How come Lila hasn't tried to kill her yet? Because she raised her. She was young enough. Yeah, but she would have known. That's the person that killed mommy and daddy. It's like, no, because you... I think her... She didn't realize it because she was hiding behind the door. I think her... Her reality, her understanding of all of that is quite possibly very skewed. Potentially. But seeing that she's been told you have to save... Five, no matter the cost. And then that playing into... And that's her later. mom. Yeah. And that's not just her mom. That's also her... Boss. Teacher, instructor, mentor, life coach, everything. It's going to be crazy. The question is, who killed their parents? The... Was it one of the Swedes? Was it... Was it um... We saw them. No, we did not see the person. We know it's a man. That's it. So I'm wondering if it was not Cha-Cha. But the um, handler was right there. Yeah. But I'm curious who killed, killed her parents. But that's just me thinking. Um, but that was going on. Then we have, like we said, the whole thing with Luther being depressed because he gets fired uh, because he threw the fight. And then him running into Allison in kind of the worst position of his life because he's like... A he's, mess. He's literally like just eating messy ribs, sitting in a corner, drinking, drinking beer. beer. And then he's talking to her and they're catching up. But I and do she's like, like, you're a mess. Like, I know. And I like that they just say, oh, we found everybody now. And it's like they're saying about what's going on. And then he tells her that, yeah, the world's going to end in seven days. We did it again. But what's Ellen Page's character's name? 
Vanya. Vanya has a kiss with the mom. Mm-hmm. The autistic son runs off, goes to drown himself in the pool or the pond. She saves him. She saves him. And transfers some of her power or something to him. Maybe he activated powers. I don't know. Maybe he's the one that ends the world. That could be. A, that's a good thing. He might be the one who does end the world. Maybe he throws a tantrum. Which would not be good. And that's what causes it. Uh, the shock of the episode was seeing Grace as a human, not just as a robot. That was crazy. Seeing their mom, their mother figure, who was a robot who raised them, just as Reginald's girlfriend. I was just... Poof. But not even his girlfriend. Her... They were, she was just this date. They might... No, they seem like they were close enough. They might be his girlfriend, but that's crazy. Right. Because that's the person that raised him. And I like Diego's like, Mom. And he's like... She's you're, like, that? I've you're, never you're, heard you're, that one before. You're real. And he was being really nice to her. And that was kind of like... Because he, he had a soft spot for the mom. That was his whole thing, is that he felt bad for her, and that he loved mom. That was Diego's kryptonite. So... That could lead us up later. Um, also, number five speaking, what was it, Latin to Hargraves? I don't know. It was either Latin or was pork to, It was some language, and he's speaking it to Reginald, and Reginald's stopping and listening. Fluently. That's confusing. I think the next episode they're going to explain what that means, but yeah. We didn't... There was no subtitles. There was no... So we don't know what they mean. And uh, the other bits of news... With Allison's husband essentially just keeping her out of the loop of what's going on and her him not trusting her. I mean, I admit he has every right not to trust her, but she's trying and she saved him. And I get it. They haven't known each other for very long, but that seems like such a quick turnaround from loving husband to I'm not even going to call you. I'm just going to go back to the meeting. It's just... That seems too harsh. I don't know. That's harsh for that purpose. And then uh, the other relationship, which was tragic, is Klaus just trying to save D- Dave and Dave's uncle or his father, whomever, his father figure, uncle. pretty much having him beat the shit out of him. And then Klaus is just... Because Kla- Klaus comes in and goes, okay, I know. Your father was in the military. It made him a man. Your uncle... Dave was in the military. It made him a man that this is why you're going to join the military. And I know that you're thinking about it right now, but they're going to send you off in a war and no one's going to win and all this other stuff. And it's just the heartbreak of him afterwards. Cause you see him just, apparently we found that he's been sober the entire time he's been gone for three, for was it eight years? Mm-hmm. Well, he no, was three a, years, three years. Sober. While he was a cult leader. He's been sober, which is crazy, and now he's like, you know what? This broke my heart. Screw it. And he just goes to a liquor store, which looks way too modern for most liquor stores. They have Captain Morgan's and Grey Goose, which that was not in the 60s. Yeah, it was. I think that was a, a, a typo. Like, they they couldn't get the actual old, they didn't think about it. Like, continuity guys like, oh, we'll put some liquor bottles up, not realizing, hey, those are modern liquor bottles. But it was seeing the modern liquor bottles and him going crazy and drinking it all uh, and just getting super drunk. And then him going back to the the mansion of the old lady that he conned into making him a cult leader. And then all of his cult followers are waiting for him. And him running away, like saying, no, uh, uh, don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to the river. Captain Morgan's and... Spice Drum was started in 1944. Oh, I didn't know that. But it was the modern logo. It was not the old logo. So I'm wrong there, but Klaus just trying to get his stuff together. And I don't know. Klaus seems to be starting to become my favorite character in the show. Because he's going through the most insanity. And Ben trying to keep him grounded and failing miserably. Right? Yes. But even like... When he saw him get punched, even he was just like, I can't, like, that was just, like, the look on his face was just so sad, because he knew how much he loved him. Yeah. It was heartbreaking. Okay, so the 1960 bottle of Captain Morgan looks the same. 
They've just been rocking the captain. Yeah. Okay. Guess I'm wrong. You didn't have to fact check me on that. I know, but I... You didn't have to fact check me on that. I'm leaving this in. I know, but I like the costumes, the time period. They got everything so right. They try to, but... It does look very modern. But the 60s is when they did all the fancy bottles of liquor for everybody's home bars. That is true. So, I will also the Majestic Twelve. I like that the party that no one was questioning five drinking liquor, and he looks older than he did last season. Well, that's it's been two years, so but he like that's aged. also the sixties. Yeah, he's just people like didn't have seatbelts. Yeah, that's true. If the kids want to have a drink, let them. We're gonna have to wait and see what how this all ends because the world's gonna end in quote unquote seven days. Or six days as of... As but I liked this episode. It was weird. Nothing really happened. There was a fight with the Swedes. Which is... They're really weird. Like, compared to... Um, Cha-Cha and... Uh, Hazel. Hazel. But compared to Cha-Cha and Hazel, the... Uh, the Swedish triplets are just kind of... I don't find them threatening or charismatic. They're like just weird. They were more when they first arrived. They were more like sleek, like their hair was more glued down. And but still, I mean, when we saw Cha Cha and Hazel, them with the huge mascot mask going crazy, and they just were because also was was it uh, that was Mary J. Blige's Cha Cha, and now you know the, I love Mary J. Blige. That was really cool, and then it just. Three random Swedish guys. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but this episode, okay, not great. Not the best episode of the season. I think the weakest episode of the season so far. Yeah. Because it... it uh, it's a strong episode, it's just not... Just nothing really happens. Stuff happens, but nothing really happens. That's true. I still liked it. So, yeah. If you saw it, let us know what you think. Email us, uh, zanspirekin.com, or tweet us at Spirekin. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Apple iTunes, and various other social media sites. And let us know what you think. Um, next week, we're going to go back to these two episodes. We might talk about another TV show. Um, don't know which one, though, yet. I'm going to watch that Sherlock Holmes one. That's at the end of the month. Ugh. All the good shows happen next month, not this month. So... So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Let us know what you think. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. All right? Keep watching TV. We're gone, Will. Catch you next time.